Welcome to my ultra life. I'm in Prague. And I'm here in the Old Town Square, the center of Prague. And uh, if you'd like to see the, this Old Town Square, this empty of people in the first week of July, you need to get here really early in the morning. It's about seven o'clock and tourists are already starting to come in. I'm standing here in front of the Nardani National Museum. It was uh, built in 1918 and just recently restored to its uh, original beauty. And uh, it's an amazing structure uh, and it's very beautiful inside. The museum stores about 14 million uh, uh, natural artifacts and historical items from the uh, Bohemian history. In March of 1939, Hitler proclaimed Bohemia as part of the German protectorate and basically occupied the Czech Republic. But uh, in the museum, I learned that there were many Czech fighters that flew for the RAF, the British Air Force, during World War II and uh, fought bravely and died uh, to defend their homeland. And right here uh, in front of the museum is called the Wenceslas Square. And we primarily have heard of uh, good old King Wenceslas from a Christmas carol, uh, but he was really a, a real guy and apparently a good king. Uh, and so on this square in uh, 1989 was the Velvet Revolution where the, the Czech Republic proclaimed itself uh, separate from the Soviet Union and uh, moved out from behind the Iron Curtain. And uh, it was remarkable because there was very little bloodshed and thus called the Velvet Revolution. Prague is the capital city of the Czech Republic. It has a population of about 1.3 million and uh, the beautiful Vltava River runs right through the city. On this side, in the city we've got the main town and everything and on the other side up on a hill is the Prague Castle which we'll see a little bit later. And Prague has always been the uh, capital of Bohemia and uh, was home of kings and even emperors of the Holy Roman Empire. So at one point uh, actually King Charles IV became the king of the Holy Roman Empire. Of course, that was after the fall of Rome and whatnot. And uh, so I believe the reason the church in uh, the middle of the Prague Castle is so big is because it was the center of the Roman church for a time before they moved back to Rome. Getting around Prague is quite easy. There's trams like this one here running all around town and I uh, found that you can use Google Maps very easily to put in your destination and it will tell you what tram to take and how long to, to wait in between trams and uh, where to walk to your destination after you get off the tram. So even though it's very easy and really inexpensive to ride the trams around the city, bring some good walking shoes because you'll do a lot of walking as well. Behind me is the Municipal House. Uh, it's used for concerts. In fact, the other night we uh, watched a classical concert there. They hold concerts almost every night, a couple times a night at 6 and 8 p.m. And it's a great experience, about 50 euros per person though. The Municipal House was opened in 1912 and it's a Art Nouveau style building. On this location previously was the Court Palace for the King of Bohemia. And for some reason the palace was uh, abandoned in 1845 and later destroyed in uh, in the early 20th century. Next to the municipal house is the Powder Tower. It was uh, one of the 13 gates uh, for the old town of Prague and instead of being a defensive tower it's really meant to be a beautiful entrance. Uh, I got the name of and it was built in 1475 so it's old. Um, in the 1700s it was used to store gunpowder uh, so that's how it, be, it became known as the Powder Tower. Uh, and so we go through this gate and it will lead us to the Old Town Square. The Gothic church behind me is called Lady Before Tyrann. And it's, a, as I said, Gothic church from around 1475. The other church in the uh, Old Town Square is the Baroque style 
St. Nicholas Church and uh, also we have the Old Town Hall and um, it's famous for its astrological clock which we'll see here in a minute. Um, there's also museums and other kinds of attractions right here. Uh, this is really a very popular uh, tourist destination. And this is the astrological clock. It was uh, built in 1410. Um, it's like the third oldest astrological clock in the world and the only one still functioning today. And it's uh, right at the front of the Old Town Hall. Very, very, very popular uh, photo spot. Prague is really a dream for architecture lovers with uh, beautiful buildings everywhere. Examples of uh, Gothic, Baroque, and Art Nouveau architecture at every turn. It really is amazing. And the reason is that Prague was one of the only cities in Europe that was not bombed out in World, World War II. So a lot of the old buildings remain just as they were. Well, we have arrived at the Charles Bridge uh, and you'll notice that the entrance to the bridge is another tower very similar to the Powder Tower. In fact, the Powder Tower was fashioned after this tower. And so this was one of the city gates, one of the 13 city gates to the old town of Prague. Uh, the Charles Bridge, of course, crosses the Vltava River and leads us to the Prague Castle. And uh, the Charles Bridge was built in 1342 and was the only means of crossing the river until 1841. And now the Charles Bridge is an extremely popular tourist destination and a destination for early morning bridal photos. Well, I'm inside the Prague Castle complex, and it really is truly an enormous complex. It's about 750,000 square feet. And according to the Guinness World Book of Records, it's the largest castle complex in the world. Uh, behind me is the St. Vitus Church that uh, construction began in the 9th century and didn't complete until the 20th century. The castle complex houses four churches four palaces, five great halls, four towers, and a myriad of uh, buildings, which I have no idea what they did with all these buildings. But uh, this was <clears throat> the castle for the King of Bohemia, for the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, and, uh, and now the President of uh, the Czech Republic. And uh, also a early morning favorite for uh, bridal photos. So if you're visiting Prague, you definitely want to come up to the Prague Castle. The St. Vitus Cathedral has artwork and sculptures like you've never seen anywhere, you'll never see anywhere else in the world. <clears throat> I would plan to spend at least half a day. There's lots of activities and tours to take. Uh, there's garden cafes. It's really just a beautiful thing. Now, I ran up the hill to get here. Uh, but you don't have to do that. There's a tram that drops you right off uh, on the, I think it's the northern side of the castle with a short walk to the entrance. And uh, so no worries. You just tram your way up here and uh, it's been a wonderful afternoon visiting the castle and seeing everything there is to see. 
So that's running through Prague. I've had an ultra lifetime and I hope you do too. Take care and see you on the next video. And if you like what I'm doing or you think it's just not stupid, then subscribe. I like traveling around the world and sharing my runs through towns. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page, My Ultra Life. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful ultra life as well.